What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to cover how to make the typing racer game you see behind you uh, being played right now from scratch in Python using the Pygame module. So let's do a quick project showcase before we dive into the line by line tutorial. Basically, this game is a fun way to test your typing abilities against a wide library of uh, words. And I give you the ability to choose what length words you want to play with. And then every level, it gets progressively harder because more words spawn per round. So level one, one word spawns. Level 10, 10 words spawn and so on and so forth. Uh, we have a progressive scoring matrix, so you get more points for the longer words. So if you play this game on eight letter words, you'll get more points per word, but it also becomes a lot harder. Um, there's also a pause menu so that you can enter this menu and freeze it at any point if you have to, and then you can quit and exit from here, or you can go back into the game. You're also able to change the length of the letters you're playing with mid round, and it'll just update the next level that increments. Um, as well as tracking your active score, we also track your best score and we save that and store that in an external text file so that it reloads in between runs. Um, so you select whatever letter lengths you wanna play with and then whatever you type and enter down here, uh, shows up and then if you're typing the word correctly, it's going to highlight the word that you're typing in green on the screen so you can see if you're accurately uh, typing the word or if you've made a mistake. So if I type E-N, you can see the E and the N highlight. But then if I make a mistake and type O, then it goes away. But if I go back and I type S, it shows up. And so I can hit enter and that word clears out and it increments me to the next level. There's also a, le a little bit of random generation where the words could have um, any of the length of the different ones you selected. So if you have length two, three, and four selected, it is totally randomly generated which of those lengths it'll be, as well as a variation of how fast it can be. And the faster and longer a word is, the more points you get for it. Um, we also use a module called the Natural Language Toolkit to import our word library. So there is a massive uh, uh, library of words that you could play against. So it's not just something you have to manually enter. But I will talk about in the tutorial how you can control what letters, uh, what words are presented to you. So if you don't like how wide ranging the list we get from the Natural Language Toolkit is, I'll show you how to manually compile your words list. Just understand that's a good bit of extra work, but you absolutely can do that. So I had a ton of fun making this project. Uh, in summary, we do it in like 270-ish lines of code. Um, we use several outside modules we make a class for the words, a class for the buttons. We ex uh, extract as much of the functionality as we can into methods or functions. Um, and so overall, it just it's really clean code, in my opinion. And of course, all the assets uh, and all the code will be available in the GitHub link below. So without me rambling on any longer, let's dive right into the line by line tutorial together. All right, so let's dive right into the code together. Um, and basically, as always with the Pygame games, we have to start by setting up our Pygame game. Um, go ahead and import Pygame as well as the random and copy modules. Uh, if you don't have any of those installed already, just do pip install Pygame random copy. Random and copy were probably included with your uh, Pygame or <laughs> with your Python install when you installed it. Um, but we need Pygame, random, and copy for this. So just make sure to run pip and install any of those modules if you don't have them already. There's a million tutorials on YouTube on how to install uh, stuff with pip. So I'm not going to cover that too much here. But then pygame.init is really important um, just to initialize pygame and let you uh, access all of the tools inside of pygame. And then uh, let's go ahead and do some of the just boilerplate setup as quick as we can. But we're going to define a hard-coded width, and I'm going to use 800 pixels, and a hard-coded height of 600 pixels. We'll use those throughout the game. And then the screen, I'm just going to do pygame.display dot set mode and then all this needs is our width and our height just like that okay and then one thing that I like to do um, but it's absolutely an optional step is just set the uh, caption and I like to say um, you know something descriptive and fun typing racer in Python and that's going to change the caption at the title bar of the 
um, banner. And then um, sort of a, something we've been doing recently on the channel, so fans of the channel will recognize this, is uh, pygame.surface. I'm creating a surface that I can draw things with uh, semi-transparency on so that when I make like the pause menu, which I know I want to do, um, I can do it as a semi-transparent overlay on the screen. This is probably optional as well. You could draw the whole pause menu onto the screen and have it be opaque, but I really like this step. Then we need a timer to control the speed that our game plays at, so we'll do that with pygame.time.clock. Uh, and then we need to define a frame rate, so we'll do that with FPS equals 60. Um, we need to load in a bunch of fonts and sounds for the game later, uh, so we're going to skip over that, but I am going to put in here load in assets like fonts and uh, sound effects and music. So we're going to put that here. Um, but then we're just going to skip over it for now and we're going to go down to the main game loop that is required to get the game running. And we will set run equal to true and then we'll say while run. So what we're doing there is we're creating a variable that is going to be just constantly active until we're ready to exit the game. And so we say while run, let's just do some basic things to get the game to boot up for us. We'll do screen.fill uh, and we'll just fill it with gray and then we'll do timer.tick at our defined frame rate. And then kind of the only other thing we have to come down is we have to come down and define uh, how to get out of this infinite loop. So we'll say for event in pygame.event.get. And then we will say if event.type is equal to this special pygame.allcaps quit, which is the red X in the top of the window that's going to boot up. We'll use that red X as our method of uh, exiting the game. And so what we'll say is just run equals false. And that'll get us out of this infinite while loop. But then in the while loop down here, we need to do pygame.display.flip just to get everything that we define drawn onto the screen. And then outside of that while loop, just do pygame.quit so that it actually exits, okay? And those should be the only things we need to do to get a window of width 800, height 600. Here we go. Uh, the caption says typing racer in Python. And if I click the red X in the top right, it closes the window. So that is it for basic Python uh, screen setup. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is draw kind of the static background screen stuff, okay? So for that, we're going to just make a function that we'll call draw screen. And for now, we won't receive anything back from it just yet. Um, we'll come up here and we'll define this function, this method draw screen, okay? And for now, we'll just say um, pass and we don't know what we need to return just yet because the game's not all built out. Um, but actually, we don't need to put pass. We just aren't going to put anything in return just yet. So let's go ahead and define the screen outlines for background shapes and title bar areas, okay? And so the first thing, as you probably saw in the... Uh, in the intro of this video is that I just kind of defined the bottom zone of the screen for a few things, for tracking what level you're on, tracking the user's active input, and then a spot for the pause button. And then I put stuff like um, the score, your high score, and your lives at the top of the screen in a semi-transparent font so that words can pass over that zone without interfering too much. So let's just get started by defining some of those zones using pygame.draw.rect. And we'll put all these things on the screen because we want them to be solid. Um, and now I went and got some pretty specific navy colors. Uh, 32, 42, 68 was just a navy RGB value that I really liked. You can put whatever you want in there. You could just type in the word blue in uh, quotes if you wanted to, but I thought navy looked cool. So I don't usually get like custom colors. Um, as people who watch all my videos know, I use a lot of the default ones, but I thought this looked really cool and it helped kind of take the um, take the game an extra step. So that's just the first rectangle um, and it takes four arguments to fully define a rectangle. It takes X starting position, which is gonna be zero all the way on the left of the screen. Y starting position, which I just want to be 100 pixels above the bottom of the screen. And then I want to span the whole width of the screen and then be 100 pixels so that it goes down to the bottom of the screen. Um, and then this zero is optional. It just means I want it to be a solid rectangle. It would be the same as not putting anything there. 
Um, and so I get that navy uh, on the bottom of the screen that I'm gonna use as kind of my status bar, okay? So let's go ahead and do a few more rectangles um, to help define the different spaces of this screen. So pygame.draw.screen, and then this will be a white rectangle, and it'll start in the top left corner, and I want it to be the whole width and the whole height of the screen because I'm making a border. So now that's gonna be five. It's gonna be a white outline of thickness five around the entire screen. Um, and then let's do a few lines to divide that bottom rectangle that we made into usable sections. So we'll do pygame.draw. Uh, line, not rect, and we'll put it on the screen again, and it'll be white again, um, but this time we're going to make them uh, vertical bars, and then we'll do a horizontal bar as well. But so the first line we want will just be at uh, 250, so this will be the one that defines um, the level, but then separates the user input from the level. And so the X position will start at 250 and it'll start at the top of that bottom zone, height minus 100. And then it'll end at still 250, so it's a vertical line, but it'll end at height, so the bottom of the screen, and we'll make it thickness too. So before we just do too much code without showing you guys what we're doing, we should now have a white outline of our window, the navy space in the bottom, and one vertical white line that we can put the active level on the left side of and the user's input on the right side of. Okay, so that looks pretty good at 250. And we're going to make one more vertical line that we can put uh, at the separating point of the user's input and the pause button. And the pause button is just a little circle with the pause symbol inside, so it does not need a ton of space. So we'll put that at 700. And now we're going to make one more line, but this one's not gonna be vertical, it's gonna be horizontal. So it will start at zero, X position, and it'll end at the full width of the screen, X position. But then the height minus 100 is going to be constant for both. So this should give us a horizontal line at the top of that section down there. Yeah, and you can hopefully see, um, I know that uh, uh, depending on what device you're watching on, that's a minor detail. But these style things really help um, kind of make your game look a little more professional. I really enjoyed that. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to also make a black rectangle around the entire screen because I realized as I was making this initially, it's a little hard to see the outline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it the same size as our white outline, but instead of thickness five, it's gonna be thickness two. So let's take a look at that. Okay, and that one's probably uh, a little harder for you guys to see, but um, that is probably because <laughs> I didn't change it to black yet. I'm looking at and I'm like, man, it's really hard for me to see as well. Okay, let's run that. Bang. Okay, so now you have this nice, crisp uh, black line that makes it even clearer that you have a white line inside of it. Again, these are minor style things, but th we're going to build the game inside of this zone, so it's important. Now let's go ahead and say text for showing the current level players current input high score score uh lives and pause okay so uh this was the outlines now we're putting some text in the screen and so what we need to do now and i know it's kind of early um to be loading in our assets compared to a lot of my other projects like we don't always um load in assets right in the beginning we build most of the game then we load in assets but because this is a typing game, uh, we need text to get on this pretty early on. So you can see this cool background, but basically everything else we need to display is text. Um, so now I'm gonna load in the fonts that I used that you probably saw in the beginning of the game, and you'll see them pretty soon here once we load them in. So let's just load them in, okay? Basically, in total, I made this game with a header font. I made it with a pause font. Um, I made it with a whoop, a banner font, and then I use just the font for the generic words. Um, so these I do with three font files, all of which can be found in the assets fonts folder um, on the GitHub link in the description below. But to load them in, it's really easy, and if you have a different font, um, go ahead and just point this to your TTF file but all it needs is the file path within your folder structure of where you have it stored. So for me, that's assets, fonts, 
And then my header font is called square.ttf. Um, and I use, uh, pix I use size 50 for that because that's, um, it's pretty easy to read and that's going in the bottom banner. Um, because I just thought it was a good fun font. I get, um, most of my fonts for games from a website called dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. They have a hundred percent free royalty free license free fonts. As long as you're not monetizing your game. Um, most of the time, if you monetize it, you have to, uh, throw some to the creators, but some don't, uh, their licensing is defined on their website, but that's where I get these fonts. And then we're going to do that pygame.font.font .font a couple more times. It probably would have been faster for me to just copy it. Um, but the one for pause is not square. It's going to be one up.ttf. Um, it's just a cool looking, um, font that I liked for my buttons <clears throat> and my pause screen. Now, banner font, I'm going to copy that because it is the same font. It's just smaller. So it's 28 size. Um, and then just the font that we define the words that go on the screen, just go ahead and copy one of those lines again. <clears throat> that one, it's actually fine. It's called Aldo the Apache. Uh, again, same website, and I just thought it was cool. And Aldo the Apache is a reference to Inglorious Bastards by Quentin Tarantino, uh, which is kind of funny. <clears throat> but anyways, that's not why I picked it. I picked it because it's a cool font. So this is loading in the fonts for the game uh, on my side. If you don't want to use my fonts, feel free to load in whatever fonts you want or just use free sans bold.ttf. That is usually the font that anyone with a Windows computer uh, gets when they install Python Pygame. Okay, so let's go back into draw screen. We've loaded in our fonts. It probably took me longer than it should have to explain that. But I'm going to do two things in one step. So to draw text onto the screen, you need to do a font.render, and then you need to do a screen.blit, okay? And so ordinarily, you could define your text as this, and then you could do screen.blit your, your text down here in the next step. Um, for me, I just find when it's simple text, it's easiest to do them on the same line, but I don't want people to get lost here. We are doing two things. We're doing screen.blit, which is a, a block transfer, I believe, which draws something onto the screen. And then in here, we're doing font.rendering. So header font.render. And this is where we'll say what level we're currently on. So F, it's going to be an F string so that we can say the word level, but then also the variable level, which we haven't made yet, but we will, um, in the same string. Okay. And so then just define uh, this anti-alias argument, which is like a smoothing tool. Uh, it's always true in my experience. Um, and then uh, I want this text to be white. Again, that's a style thing you can do and it is up to you. And then for X and Y position to, to blit this onto the screen, just 10 so that it's off the left edge of the screen by a little bit. And then height minus 75 puts it really nicely in that first section we defined for it um, on the bottom left in our banner. So let's go ahead and just make a level equals zero to start. Um, variable up here and I'll make a section for game variables so that it's kind of separated out from initial stuff. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now we have the argument level. If I boot this up, you guys can see the header font um, and there you have level zero. It's in our square. Even if you get into double digit levels, this space will still be able to uh, hold it and I'd be impressed to meet anyone who can get to triple digit levels with this game. If you can, just bump that uh, just bump that middle section to the right a little bit. Okay, but let's copy that whole line that we did for our level text and let's go ahead and make the uh, player's input next. So header font dot render and it'll still be an F string, but we don't need anything else in here. We'll just say whatever the active string so the player's input is, let's draw that on the screen. Um, and let's put quotations around it. If you watched the intro, I think you'll see there's always quotes there showing that something goes there. And we just need to scoot it to the right of that 250 line. So we'll put it at 270. And uh, so active string will be what we fill in with user input in just a moment. Um, but for now, let's call it uh, test string. Okay, just so that we can see that it's in the right spot. Um, so let's boot that up, make sure it looks good. 
bang and there's test string okay and the longest words i'm gonna let the player uh type are eight digits so that you can already see it's got room for like 14 15 characters there so uh that's totally fine um now the next thing i'm just gonna put a little comeback to this uh is put pause button here because if you saw in the intro i want the pause button my select what uh letters or select what length i'm typing and my play and my exit buttons to all share common characteristics so we need to make a button class which we'll do after we draw the static stuff so we need to make a button class we'll do that in just a moment <clears throat> but for now let's just define uh, the remaining um, static things. So on the top, it'll be uh, lives, score, and high score at the top of the screen. Let's go ahead and just grab one of our screen.blit lines <clears throat> and modify it. Okay, so screen.blit, and then instead of this being header font, which I called it header, I guess it's the footer of the screen. This is the one I defined as banner font, which is going to be semi see through. Okay, so here I want to say score and then a colon and then a space. And in here, I'm gonna put a variable, you guessed it, that I'm gonna call score. Okay, now position wise, uh, this is gonna be kind of in the middle of the screen. So I don't know why I did it in this order, but the left is gonna be lives, the middle of the screen will be your score, and then the right side of your screen will be your high score. So for these, I'm just gonna put them at uh, 10 so that they're down off the top of the screen, but we're gonna have three here. We're gonna have the score, the high score, and so instead of high score, I think I just typed in best, um, and then we're going to have lives. Uh, and so this one will change the variable to lives, and then this one will change to high underscore score. And like I said, uh, high score is gonna be over on the right, so I used 550, and lives is gonna be pretty close to the left, so I used 10 for those X positions. Now all we have to do is we just have to come up into game variables, and we have to make score equal to zero. Uh, I'll make high score equal to one just so that we can see um, that it's working and I'll make lives equal to five. <clears throat> okay, so let's boot that up and there you go. And if you don't uh, love the um, style of it, if you don't like it uh, as white, which actually now that I'm looking at my copy of it, I think I made those top three black so that it'd be a little easier to read. Um, but that is a style decision you can make. I specifically grabbed a font that was somewhat see-through so that that was still playable portions of the screen. Um, but anyways, there you go. You can see score zero, best one, lives five, the active, um, excuse, excuse me, the active input from the user in the bottom middle, um, the level that we're on in the bottom left, and we need to put a pause button down here. But like I said, there's gonna be a lot of buttons in this game, so we wanna make a class for buttons. So let's do that next, all right? Um, <clears throat> cool, I think that was pretty good. We drew the screen, it looks good. Uh, hopefully everyone is still engaged. It is hard to do complicated projects and make them fun the whole time. Uh, and accurately teach what I'm doing and have some confidence in what I'm doing. So don't wanna get sidetracked here, but I appreciate everybody sticking with me on these long tutorials. Um, okay, so let's define underscore underscore in it underscore underscore, which is just abbreviated dunder, which I think is pretty cool. Those double underscores on either side. And the things that are going to fully define a button are going to be the X and Y position of that button. <clears throat> as well as the text we want to put on that button. And then we need to track whether or not it's actively being clicked. And then I wanna say what surface to draw it onto because some buttons will be on the screen, some buttons will be on my pause menu. So passing in what surface to draw it on is important as well. And then something interesting you wanna do when you have classes, I'm teaching this assuming you don't know that much about Python classes, is you wanna take all those arguments that you pass in and you wanna put them in self dot uh, variables that you can use inside of your project. So self dot y pause, x pause, text, clicked, surface, you just need an internal variable that starts with self dot uh, and you can make the rest of the name the same typically but we're just going to use those and that's all your init function usually needs to have. 
Um, and then the only other thing I want to do here is I want to define the draw function because within the draw function, we'll also just check if it's clicked, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a circle and I'm just going to abbreviate it sir. You can abbreviate circ or type out circle if you want. doesn't matter to me. And I want circular buttons. So I'm going to say pygame.draw.circle. I'm going to put it on whatever surface we pass in. So that'll probably say screen or pause or whatever. And then again, I picked some custom colors here. There's going to be three colors that my buttons do. They're going to have one color when they're not clicked or highlighted. That's their base color. And that'll be this 45, 89, 135. And you'll see it as soon as we boot it up. Then they're going to have a color when they are highlighted but not clicked. And then they're going to have a third color when they're clicked. That's pretty much red. So it's going to be like, I think, light blue, light pink, and then red, I think, if I remember correctly. But we'll see when we boot it up. And then the last thing the circle needs is where you want to draw it. And of course, that's just self.xpause, self.ypause. And then it needs the radius of the circle, which for me, 35 pixels looked really good within my game. So I use a 35 there. You could add a variable here, size, if you wanted your buttons to vary in size, and then self.size, and then define the size of your buttons there if you wanted. All mine are the same size. It looked really good. So I don't worry about that too much. Um, but then the next thing we want to do is we want to um, put text over top of the put text over top of that shape. So what we'll do is self dot surf dot blit. And then this, uh, I called it pause font, but we're going to use it for all the buttons. So you could go back and rename it button font if you wanted. Um, don't at me. I'm doing my best. <laughs> and so we'll do pause font dot render self dot text. So whatever we pass in to be the text of that button, uh, white shows up no matter what the color of the background is pretty well. And then for X position, I just say self dot X pause minus 15. So scoot it to the left because what we pass in is actually the center of the circle. Um, that's what X pause Y pause is. So the text, we would just want to move it to the left and up a little bit. Um, so self dot X pause minus 15 and self dot Y pause minus 25. Whoa. Uh, self dot Y pause minus 25 end up being really good spots to put the text that we pass in. Let me pull that over. Nice. Um, really good spots to, to locate the text. Okay. Um, and now the other thing I want to do is take this same circle argument and I want to make a white outline for it. Um, so rather than this color, we just need it to be white and it's just cool it adds a second layer to the button it makes it look a little more professional and then the only other thing we have to do is after our radius come over and define a thickness so that we specify it's not solid uh, and that'll be size three okay so this is really cool um, it's not doing the get clicked part yet but let's go ahead down into our draw screen and just visually look at what that's saying okay so basically i'm gonna say all right i want the pause button to be equal to my button class which i didn't spell right my button class at uh, position of 748 so again this is the center x and center y position and i want it over in that um this is the middle of the button and i want it over in that block uh that we saved all the way on the right of the screen and then for the pause button, two capital I's right next to each other just look like the pause logo for me. You could use the like vertical bar key if you wanted, but actually capital I's looked better with the font that I chose. Um, but that's a little play around the style if you want kind of thing. Um, okay, so then for clicked, initially I'm just going to say false for every button i'm going to say false initially for clicked because we're going to see within the class if we've been clicked and then i'm going to draw this one onto the screen and then the only other thing i have to do because we did all the hard work inside of the class is just call pause button dot draw right here okay um so now if i run this and i didn't make any errors which is a big if <laughs> Okay, we get this cool pause button and you can see those capital I's right on top of it look like the pause logo, which is pretty cool. Um, but I can't click it yet. It doesn't do anything. And so that is the next important part of the pause 
button class. So we're going to do that, like I said, inside of the draw self function. You could make a case this might be advanced enough functionality um, to make like a check clicked function, but I actually think it's pretty darn easy. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say if that circle we just defined dot collide point with pi game dot mouse dot get position, okay? Then we want to say that, all right, the buttons that are currently pressed are equal to pi game dot mouse dot get pressed. So we're only going to check for pressed buttons if it's over top of a um, button. So there's no reason to check if our mouse has clicked on something unless it's at least over top of the circle. Just a little optimization. I never claim to write particularly optimized code. Um, but then we're going to say if buttons zero is clicked because pygame.mouse.getPressed returns a list of all of the buttons that the mouse could click and the left key, which is what I want to use to select, is buttons zero, okay? And I called it butts because it's hilarious. <laughs> all right, pygame.draw.circle self.surf <clears throat> and then comma, and then this is the second color. So this was basically, it's highlighted, 190, 35, 35, and positionally, it's the exact same as these, and I want it to be solid. So I can just come down here and make sure that you get the proper amount of parentheses, but it's basically the same uh, circle, and then we just want to set self.clicked equal to true, okay, just like that. But then we can say else because this means it's highlighted, but it's not actively being clicked. And so we'll say else and we'll do pygame.draw.circle self.surf. And then this, instead of a 35, I made 89. And this, instead of a 35, I made 135. That's how I got my highlighted but not clicked color. If you're saying, Pete, how'd you come up with these colors? Was it guess and check? Yep. It was guess and check. <laughs> okay, so that is all we need to do for our button class to handle clicking, handle clickery, and uh, highlighting. All right, so let's minimize the cl button class. We don't have to change anything in our draw screen function. So let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see when the mouse goes over the button, it turns to this like light pink. And if I click with the left mouse key, it turns red, okay? So this is like a little lesson on buttons and button classes inside of a bigger project, but I thought this was really cool. And now we can define a bunch of buttons on our pause menu using that same class, and it's gonna save us a ton of time and effort, okay? So that's super cool. Uh, we're not doing anything with the pause button yet, but we will just return pause button dot clicked. Um, we're just going to return that from this function because that way I don't have to return the button and then check if it's clicked in the outside world. I'm just going to return that from the draw screen function and I will come down to the main game loop where I call draw screen and I will just say the pause but status, <laughs> and I'm just calling it but because that's hilarious, um, is uh, the one thing I get back from draw screen. So draw background, screen, stuff, and statuses, and get pause button status. Okay, so that is what draw screen does for us. Um, I think probably the fun next thing to do would be handle uh, user input when we type so that we can modify that active string. And this is not going to be super hard. What we're going to do is come down below if event.type equals pygame.quit. And we will say if event.type is equal to pygame.key down. Okay. And that's, uh, that's what is going to be the status for um, hitting backspace. So removing a key or typing a valid character to add to our string, right? but we only want to accept typing if we're not paused. Okay, so this is a variable we haven't made yet. We haven't told uh, it what to do. And so when the game boots up, we'll say paused equals false. And later we'll take a look at how the pause button being clicked should initiate pause. But for now, I wanna focus on the, uh, the user input, okay? So if we're not paused, what I want to do is say if event.unicode, which is going to tell us um, the unicode of the key that was just pressed, 
and then I'm going to say dot lower. So I'm going to translate, if you accidentally hit caps lock or if you held shift and typed an A or something, I'm gonna translate that to lowercase right in the checker. And I'm gonna say if that is in a list of valid letters, um, then what I want to do is I want to add the thing you just typed, so active string. I want to add the Unicode, so event dot Unicode um, dot lower like that. Yeah, I want to add that, um, and then I need to make a list of what the actual valid letters are. Okay, so do 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 what yeah game variables i don't know why that took me so long um and then it might seem a little tedious you might be like wait is there really not a built-in list of letters but this is not going to take long okay it's a b c and you're just there like is he really going to make me type the alphabet out no you can go to the github and you can get the list yourself a b c d f g h i already did this i've done this several times now j k l um, I would never make you guys do this. And oh, let's go to a new line. It'll be nicer to look at. P, A1, Q, nice. R, S, you got it. T, U, V, W, X, Y, bang, Z. And if you want, oh, I messed up on Z. If you want extra characters, if you're doing a Spanish version and you need an N with a tilde, or you just have, you speak a foreign language and there's other characters, just make this list whatever you want the valid characters to be. Um, okay, so this is all I need. It's, I, it's trying to reformat, it's really just horrendous. Um, Sometimes the like automatic style suggestions your IDE give you are not great. So moving on, uh, those are all the valid letters. So if the key that I type is in the valid letters list, then what I want is to just, um, I want to just add the uh, key that I just pressed to the, <laughs> to the, um, to the active string. I don't know why that was so hard for me. All right, now let's take care of uh, the backspace. So then we'll say if event dot key is equal to pi game dot and then uh, k underscore backspace. So this is a very specific one. Um, we'll say the backspace key and the length of my active string, active string is greater than zero. So this is important because we don't wanna be able to delete a character from an empty string. So if your active string is at length zero, then we don't want backspace to do anything. Uh, but the really easy thing to do is when we hit uh, backspace, all we have to do is redefine the active string as the active string as it already was minus the last character. And to do that, you use this, uh, these square brackets, which are going to select a range of items in that list. And doing no character before the colon is the same as saying from the very beginning until the last character in my string. So minus one is just going to drop one character off the string, okay? And so what we'll do then is we'll say, all right, we've handled entering letters and we've handled backspaces. The last thing we want to do is how are we going to submit? Uh, and I'll say if event.key is equal to um, pygame.k underscore return, which is actually the enter key. It used to say return on everyone's keyboards, I guess. It's from the typewriter days, which is cool, but it's still called return in pygame, even though it should probably be k underscore enter. And I'm going to say or pygame.k underscore space because I don't know what you crazy typers are going to want to do if you'll want to use the return key or the space key. But this way, either of them will be uh, valid. And what we'll do then is we'll move the active string that you were entering into this submit string and we'll reset active string. OK, so what we need to do is we just need to um, initialize submit as an empty string. And we're going to use checking if submit has something in it as a tool for checking if the uh, checking if the word that was entered is in the words that are on the screen. Um, but for now, let's just leave it at that and see if all this, if all of our uh, entry stuff is working here. So I booted up. It actually has test string in it. So I'll just say enter. And now I'm going to type in P 
Pete uh, didn't take the P. Oh, that's interesting. Lamaster, that worked. Test, cool. Pete. And actually, the P didn't work, so let's check out our letters list. Uh, H I J K L M N O. Oh, I didn't put a comma between those two. Whew, that's why we test, folks. <laughs> Make sure you've got commas between every letter in your letters list. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. The entering is working. Now, the one thing is we really haven't handled what to do with buttons, we haven't handled what to do with pause, and we haven't generated levels yet. Um, so there's quite a few things we need to do, but we're making really good progress. And that word entry mechanism is a really important core mechanic for this game. All right, so let's kind of think ahead here for the next couple of things we need to be ready for. So we'll say if we are paused, right, then we want uh, to do a draw pause function, which um, is not actually the next thing we're going to do. I'm just going to say draw pause. And for now, I'm going to say pass. But we need to keep that in mind that that's something we have to do is draw the pause menu. But what I think is a little more interesting to do next before we get into the nitty gritty like pausing is check if we have a new level. So I'll actually say L if new level. Okay, so if we're calling for a new level, but we're actively paused, I don't want to generate stuff yet, because I want to let you select what length words you want to be in that next generation of letters. So we'll say L if so if not paused, and new level is true, then what I want to do is I want to get word objects, which again is going to be another class. And I want to make I want to get those from a function that we'll call generate level. So when there's a new level, we need to generate a new level and we'll just run that once and then we'll set new level equal to false. OK, and so word objects initially word objects is going to be an empty list. OK, um, and so we're going to make a function that I think I just said will be called define generate level. And in here, we're going to return uh, our word objects list, which in here we'll just say uh, return word OBJs. All right, Odell Beckham Juniors. And word OBJs, when we start out, will be an empty list in here. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at what we want to have happen when we generate a new level. Um, this is going to basically rely super heavily on our list of valid words. So we can't go on without figuring out where to get our words list from. Okay. And this was really easy for me. And if you want to do the game exact way that I did it, all you need is this module NLTK. Okay. Natural language toolkit. It's uh, I don't know who put it out. It says on their website, but natural language toolkit and from NLTK dot corpus or their body, their central body of things, I want to import a list of all of their words. And then what I want to do <clears throat> is set my word list to use in this game equal to words dot words. <laughs> OK, so that might seem a little weird. That is from the documentation <clears throat> on the NLTK uh, corpus website. You may need to do pip install NLTK. You may need to read up on the documentation on their website if uh, you're using a Mac or a different IDE. For PyCharm, this should be all you need from natural language toolkit dot corpus, import the words, and then your word list is going to be equal to words dot words. And now I want to sort this in terms of length, and I'm only going to include words that are two uh, through eight in my actual game. But that's okay. What we'll do is we'll get the indexes at which the length changes so we know how to separate out the words by length. And what I'll say initially is the length of the first characters in this list are going to be one. <clears throat> so here's going to be our little word list sorting mechanism. And I should say, if you want to manually make a, a list of words, you can just do this. You can just say word list equals uh, apple banana, banana, 
grape, what, like whatever you want. You can just make a word list that is a list and everything we're about to do will still work. I'm getting a massive list of thousands and thousands of words so that this is a really deep game with tons of words. Um, but you could just type your words into a list or if you have any other kind of list of words or a text file with words, you can store those in a Python list and the rest of this code is going to work the exact same way. But here's our, I'll say these are uh, game initialization things below this and now let's do the word list sorting mechanism, okay? Let's start with word list dot sort, which is a built-in Python function. And the key that we're going to use to sort this is length. So I don't want to sort it alphabetically, which is like the default for sorting um, a list of strings. I want to sort it by length. So we need that key equals length. And then what I'm going to say is for I in range length word list. Okay, so this is for every word in my word list. I'm going to say if the length of the word that I'm currently looking at is greater than the length that I typed in. So it's going to start with one. So the first index it's going to log is going to be when the words turn into two letter words. And when that happens, we'll, we'll add one to our length checker, but then our length indexes, we're going to append whatever I was at that point. So we're going to get a list sorted by length and then a list of length indexes which tells us where the words change length so when we go to randomly select a word rather than querying from the entire list we're going to query from a subset that is only the indexes we've selected if that seems complicated wait till we get back into the generate level function and it should clear right up for you okay but then what we'll do down here is at the end Let's just land, uh, length underscore indexes dot append. And then I want to append the length of the word list. So if you were playing this game uh, with words up to the length of the word list, you would need to have the index at the very end so you can select that maximum length word list, okay? Hopefully that's not too confusing. But what I'll do for you right now is I will print the length indexes um uh, list once it's done and you'll see how many um, you'll see how many of these we have so okay, minute, I spelled initialization wrong all right so with just this code let's boot it up and you should get roughly or exactly the same list as me in your uh, window down here so yeah don't worry about new level is not defined because we haven't defined it but you should have a list with these numbers in it okay so what you'll see here is the first 54 characters of this list are single digit characters and you may say how is that possible they count uh, uh capital and lowercase as separate words so uh, that's why every character is in there as like a lowercase and a capital and some special characters but this means that for two digit words, it goes from 54 to 230. For three, it goes from 230 to 1740. For four, it's from 1740 to 7253. So you can see if we were going to query from this whole list to randomly select a word every time, that would be a ton of stuff to do a random selection from. As is, it's a lot of words, but it's not that hard for Python to select from a large group of strings. So... That's, uh, that's how we sort that list and we get the indexes that we're about to use in generate level. Now let's go ahead and say new level equals true because when the game boots up, we do want to get our first word. Um, but then what we'll say is inside generate level, we're gonna take that sorted list and we're going to take a look at what choices are currently included. So if you watched the intro, which I'm guessing you did if you got here, I had a list of all of um, the choices and when it booted up, all I had active was three letter words. But so this is going to be, I don't wanna play with one letter uh, characters. So I just start with two letter characters. But so this is two letter through eight letter choices as Boolean options. And so I started with two off, three on, four off, five off, six off, seven off and eight off, okay? I think two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, okay. Um, 
But basically that list is telling us what to include and what not to include. So we need uh, the indexes that we should include in here as a separate list. So let's start with an empty list. And then let's also figure out what the vertical spacing should be. This is how we're going to make sure that multiple words aren't drawn directly on top of each other, making it basically unplayable at higher levels. And so the spacing, we'll say height minus 150 so that we can space it off of the bottom uh, window by basically a little um, margin and then divided by whatever level we're on. So that's gonna give us uh, whatever spacing per word so that they're always spaced out enough that you can read each word. But then what we need to do is we need to say if true is not in choices. Because I give you the ability to turn on and turn off the different length words, you have the ability to turn off all of the choices, but that makes the game unplayable. So this is a covering our own butt. If you accidentally turned off all of the lengths of words, I'm just going to set uh, two letter words back equal to true before running the rest of this function. So if you turn everything off, I'm going to force two letter words back on so that my program doesn't crash. Um, you can remove that and crash your program if you want. That is up to you. But then we'll say for I in range, length of choices. Okay, so we're gonna iterate through that choices list and figure out what is turned on. And then we'll say if choices at I, which is just the same as saying if choices at I equals equals true, but you don't have to do that for Booleans. You can just say if choices I. Then what we'll do is we'll include dot append and then we'll include length indexes, indexes at I, comma length indexes at i plus one and so what i'm doing here is i'm putting a tuple in there of the range that is the same as those letters okay so think about this two letter words is uh, actually choices i zero right i equals zero it's the first one and so the length of indexes, the index options for two letter words actually go from the zero index to the one index. So that is why the I plus one. Uh, if you wanted to include like 17 letter words, which I think is the end of the index, um, you would have to put a line in here that's like, if uh, I equals length of indexes, um, then you would need this to just be uh, like minus one. Like it would need to go from the second to last character to the last character. But because I stop at eight digit characters, uh, this works really well. Okay, hope I didn't lose anyone. We're basically saying if I have turned on two letter or three letter words, I want to include a tuple that basically tells me the index range in my word list of words that are that length, okay? So not too complicated, um, but a lot of fun and kind of an elegant way of getting all of the uh, options for that, for that uh, length word. Now to get the actual word, we'll say for I in range level, we gotta get a bunch of things kind of randomly. Uh, speed, Y position, X position, um, the index uh, length. So out of all of the active lengths, we need to randomly select which one of those to do. Then the actual index, so what the word should be. Uh, and then we have to create a new class for word. And so we're gonna do all that right here. So first let's do an easy one. The speed is just gonna be random.randint between one and three. Uh, you know what, for testing, I'm gonna do two to three. I think the one you get from GitHub probably has one to three on there, but I found one uh, kind of boring at lower levels. Um, so I'm gonna just say speed can be two or speed can be three. Uh, if you wanna make it a real challenge, you can up that to like two to four. This is a great place to just play around with difficulty settings for your game. But then the Y position is going to be equal to random.randint. <clears throat> And then this is a little tricky. I want it to be just off the top of the screen uh, by a little bit. And then 10 plus I times the vertical spacing we calculated up to, so remember this is a range of integers. The highest spot it could be is 10 pixels plus I times vertical spacing. So as we have 10 letter or 10 words, 14 words, 15 words, this will be 
um, basically that times the vertical spacing and then up to basically just I plus one times vertical spacing. Okay, so this is the range that we can draw each word in for level one. Um, it's going to give us the entire screen basically other than our bottom title bar. Um, but then as the levels increase, this will help spread them out for us. And then for the X position, I'm just going to say random dot rand int between the width of the screen and then width plus 500. I think again, the GitHub probably has width plus a thousand. So they get really spaced out, which is nice. Um, as you get into the higher levels, it spaces them out to make it more playable, but it can also, so I'll make it a thousand. Um, but as you'll see, if you're on like level one or level two and something spawns in a thousand pixels to the right of your screen, you're just sitting there waiting for it. You don't really notice that on higher levels, but it is an issue on lower levels. Okay, and so then we need to say the indexes that we want to choose from, the length of word we want to choose from. We're going to do random.choice this time, which is something that selects one item out of a list. And the list we want to choose from is that list of included tuples that we defined up here. So we're picking one range of indexes to uh, get a word from because this is how we randomly choose. If you have three letter, four letter and five letter words selected, you're going to have three different tuples with the indexes of those length letters in this include list. And so then we're going to randomly choose one of those tuples here. And then we need to randomly choose an index from in that range. So we'll say then the index is equal to random dot rand int again. And then the lowest value is going to be the index we just selected at uh, item zero. And then the highest one is going to be index selected at one. So remember, those are tuples. So this is the first character, which will be the low value. This is the second character, which will be the high value. And that's how we're randomly going to select a word. But we then have to go and get the text for that word. So that's going to be word list <clears throat> at the index we just picked and then converted to lowercase. Um, remember, I'm converting every character that's typed into lowercase. So we also need to convert the word into lowercase. Now we're going to say the new word is actually going to be equal to our word class. And we're going to pass in the text, the speed, the Y position, and the X position. And then to our word objects list, we're going to dot append our new word. Okay, so we're going to make this list of word class objects and pass that back when we generate a new level. This is awesome. This is all we need in the generate level function. But you may see a squiggly red line under the word uh, class for me right now, the capital W word. And so we are going to go and make that word. All right. So let's go ahead and minimize generate level. Uh, it's given me a red squiggly because we haven't made it. Let's come up above class button and let's do class word. OK. Um, and I love this. It's different enough from button that I don't think it makes sense to uh, keep like like the the um, copy the whole thing in but I am going to copy in the init because it there is some overlap there there's text x position and y position although I think I did it in a different order because I hate consistency yeah I did text speed y pause x pause so let's go ahead and say move these over here and then let's get rid of surface because they're all going on the screen so we did text and then speed and then X pause and then Y pause. So I'll just change this to speed and I'll get rid of surface. And so your init function should look like this. Okay, text, speed, X pause, Y pause. Um, and then we are gonna make a define draw function, um, but it doesn't really have anything in common with the button draw. So it didn't make a ton of sense to me um, to uh, use that draw function. I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to say color equals black. Um, if you want, I, I specifically put that in a variable because if you want to play around with your style, just change what color is equal to. But then what we're going to do is screen dot blit, oops, screen dot blit, <clears throat> and then font dot render. So remember, uh, it was called Aldo the Apache, but it is just the base font that I'm using for every word. 
and self.txt uh, true for anti-alias and then whatever color you define for the word. And then where are we gonna draw it? We're gonna draw it at self.xpos, self.ypos, okay? And then what we need to do is we need to check the uh, active length. So the length of our active string because remember from the intro, we wanna highlight a word if um, it's actively being typed. So we wanna kind of like say to the user, like, hey, I see what you're trying to type, here it is. And so what we'll do is we'll say if the active string is equal to self.text from, again, the beginning, so no, no character before the column until active length. And this is important when you get into longer words because you have to do this rather than just if active string in self.txt because you can't just check if it's a substring because if you had a word like chicken and you typed in K-E-N, we would be highlighting K-E-N even though you're at the wrong part. So we specifically need to check the text from the beginning to however long the active length is. But if that's true, then what we can do, and I'm gonna steal this whole line, I'm gonna say, uh, if that's true, then screen.blit font.render the active string, uh, and instead of color uh, being black, I'm gonna say here green, and then still in X position and Y position. And so it is really cool is this is going to put green letters over top of the black letters where you won't even see that there's two strings there as you start typing a word correctly. And then rather than put it in the define draw function, I'm gonna make a new function, just call it define update. Um, and then I'm gonna say self.xpause minus equals self.speed, okay? So as long as the game is not paused, we'll tell every word to update, which will move it to the left across our screen. That is our word class. Um, that is it, it's pretty simple, it's pretty cool. If you have any questions, as always, drop a comment, but hopefully you're still with me. That's how we're gonna generate the level. But now we need to do a few things, like we need to tell it um, to move across the screen to the left, <clears throat> as long as uh, we are not in a new level. So what we'll do now is we'll say, okay, if we were paused, draw the pause menu. Else, if it was a new level, oh, if I should say, if it was a new level, generate the level. Now what I'll say is else, okay? So this means it's not paused and it's not a new level. For W in word objects, which we should have just generated, we'll say word.draw because I don't care about doing that um, if it's paused or if it's not. Um, but then what I will say is if not paused, uh, although I shouldn't, should I, do I have to do this? Yeah, I guess actually what I want to do is just come back and say if new level and not paused because I want to draw the words even if the game is paused. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it here even though it feels a little redundant to say and not paused. And then I'm going to say else, um, which could mean that new level, yeah. Okay, so it could be paused here, at, but there's no new level. And then I'll say down here, if it's not paused, then we want to update all of the words as well. All right, so goofy little bit of code like stepping over itself, but this should work really well. And then what I'll do is I'll say if w.xpause is less than, and I'll give you a second when it clears the left side of the screen. So I'll say less than minus 200, which for longer words won't be completely off the screen, but this is giving you a chance like as it hits the left wall to still update it. Um, basically if a word is moving at three pixels a second, this is gonna give you about one second after it hits the left edge to still submit it. Um, but what I'll say is, okay, if it's made it to minus 200, you're gonna lose a life. So word objects dot remove, whatever the word is. So that's for W in word objects. We'll remove that word. And then we will take one of your lives away. Okay, lives minus equals one. <clears throat> and now we need to say, well, what if the word list is empty? What if all the words have gone? So what we'll do is we'll say if length of word objects is less than, it should never be less than, but I like to cover my butt, 
less than or equal to zero and not paused, then what we'll say is add one to, whoop, add one to the level. And that is when it's time for a new level. Okay, so new level equals true. So basically, anytime we clear out uh, the word objects list, it's time for a new level. Now, what we need to do is check if the submitted entry, so if submit, which we already covered when you hit enter or space, whatever you've actively typed will go into submit. Well, if it's not just an empty string, so not equal to empty string, we'll say init equals score. So your initial score is equal to whatever the score was when this started. And then we'll pass in score equals check answer. So this is a function we haven't done yet, but check answer score. So that'll be a new function we'll do in just a second. Then we clear out the submit string and we'll say if in it is equal to score. Okay. So I'm, the reason I'm storing in it separately is I want to be able to check if an entry was correct or wrong. And then what I'll say here is just play wrong entry sound. And I'm just going to put pass down there as well. So it doesn't throw an error, but basically this is just me foreshadowing that I'm going to put sound effects in here. And this is where the wrong entry sound is going to go inside of our check answer function. That'll be where we actually check uh, to see if the entry was correct. All right. Um, so let's see, what should we do? I think we should probably just do the check answer function next. We've talked about it enough. Um, we haven't done draw pause, although I did put it on the screen a long time ago. Yeah, let's go ahead and do check answer. Okay, so let's just come down here where we're defining our methods and let's make one called check underscore answer. And the only thing we're passing in here is the score, but I'm gonna spell it without the E uh, and we're gonna return the score without the E so that it doesn't get confused with the variable on the outside world called score. And what we'll do here is we'll say for word in word objects. And remember, this is before we've cleared out submit so we can still reference it. We'll say if the word dot text is equal to the submission, then we want to say, we want to calculate how many points to give the user because they've gotten something correct. <clears throat> and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say points equals word dot speed. So remember, however fast it's going, times the length of word.text, so the length of the string, and then times 10. So this is just to get more fun, larger numbers. So if your speed is two and your word is two letters long, it's a 40 point word, right? But then if your speed is three and your length is two, that's gonna be a 60 point word. But if your speed is three and your length is eight, that's 240. But what I found when I was play testing this is it doesn't really reward longer words at a high enough rate to make it worth playing. If your goal is high score, you would always just leave it on two pointers because it's the easiest to get through more and more levels. So I wanna add a factor here um, which is going to be the length of word dot text um, divided by four as an incentivizer. So basically you're going to get some extra points <clears throat> based on the length of text. So two and three are not going to have an additional factor on them, but then four will have an extra factor on. Am I doing that right? Should this be like divided by three instead? Yeah. Cause if we want uh, points to always be an integer, which we do, we'll say score plus equals the integer of points, then this would not reward you until you got up to five pointers or maybe eight pointers. So let's do it this way. Let's divide by three. But this right here, this last character is the fudge factor. So if you're playing the game and you feel like it's not rewarding you for higher length words, make this something that more aggressively multiplies by a factor of the length of your text. I'm gonna do this divided by three. The GitHub link might have divided by four. So play around with that if you want. But then from word objects, we're going to remove the word that we just entered. And then I'm also going to say uh, play um, successful entry sound effect here, because that's going to be the last thing we do. It's hard to do a tutorial with music and sound already playing. So I'm just going to uh, make sure lastly to come through and add sound effects. 
but that should be it for score and removing words off the screen. So I think when we boot this up, um, we don't have all the functionality built, but I think when I boot this up, it should give us a word. Nope, enter integer, oh, modulo by, yeah, level needs to be one when you start this up. Okay, not zero, it's dividing by zero in our math. Okay, so level one, it's not paused because we haven't done pause yet. It goes to level two, we'll investigate, oh, and then level three. Okay, so we're not getting, uh, we're not getting words, although I am losing lives. Okay, well, we're close, but something funky is going on here. Okay, so I think this is a uh, stupid mistake on my part, but I think our generate level function was working fine. But um, when we called them, I passed it in order text speed y pause x pause, and it needed to be text speed y pause or x pause y pause according to our init function. So order does matter when you're passing stuff in. So let's boot that up and see if that fixes it. Um, and hopefully we get a word <laughs> coming across. There it is. I'm going to try typing in guy. And you can see it highlights. That's really cool. I get score based on it. Um, REB, which I don't. that's one thing I liked about this natural language toolkit list. It's actually a bunch of wide ranging letters. So per, mud, bay. You can see they're coming at different speeds. I get different scores for that. And they're all three letter words. Yeah, taught, Oop, taught. A-G-Y, lap, um, bad, this is cool. Um, let's see if I lose some lives and then we will move on. So lives down to four, three, yeah. All right, so uh, everything there looks really good. We haven't done anything with the pause button, so uh, we're only getting three letter words and there's no way to change that within the game. So I think that would be the best thing to do next. What do you guys think? I'm not hearing any disagreements, so we'll, we'll go on. Oh, silly Pete, who are you talking to? Okay, we have the draw pause function already, so let's just figure out um, how to draw them. And the reason I passed in the copy module in the beginning, which attentive viewers will be like, hey, we imported Pygame, we imported random, I see why we're using those. Why, not, uh, why aren't we using the copy module yet? We are about to, okay? So we are going to make a function that is going to check what commitment, what changes we want to make um, to our choices list. But to do that, we need to make a deep copy of the choices list because uh, the way our get clicked function will handle and clicking these buttons will change whether or not we are selecting um, two or three or four or five or six or whatever. Um, we need some way of slowing down so that it's not every scan, it's every time we lift up on uh, the mouse click. That might seem complicated. For now, we're going to make a uh, copy of the choices list, okay? That's what you need to know. Now we're going to redefine the surface from the beginning. Pygame.surface um, and then width and then height and then comma pi game dot src alpha bang okay and now let's pi game dot draw dot rect this will be the outer body rect outer body of our pause window we're going to put it on the surface and we are just going to make it um, basically black but semi-transparent <clears throat> or white and semi-transparent i don't know black and semi-transparent is fine um, and then it needs some arguments. We'll put it at 100, 100, and then 600, 300. This is gonna give it nice buffers around the entire window, but be near the middle of the screen. I'm gonna make it a, a, a solid rectangle, but a rounded rectangle with edge size five. That's what the zero and the five are doing. And now uh, I'm gonna do a second one, which is like edges, and I'm gonna make it more transparent. And then this will just be an edge. Okay, um, and now that's all we're gonna do for the outline, but we're gonna do a resume button, a quit button, um, and then a bunch of, uh, what am I trying to say? A bunch of length buttons, okay? So those are outlines, and now we need to define buttons for pause menu, okay? And let's go ahead and start with the 
resume button. Resume underscore button will be equal to capital B button. Um, and then this, I'm just going to put a little down and inside the, uh, the window that we just made. And I'm going to use a forward caret as my play character. It's a plain text thing on my keyboard that I'm already prepared to use. So I'll use a forwards caret like that. And then I will say uh, false for if it's actively clicked. Remember, it's we're going to check within the button class if it's clicked. And then we're going to draw it onto our surface. And then we're going to call resume dot button uh, resume button dot draw right after it. And I'm going to copy both of these, and I'm going to make my quit button. Quit button is going to be equal to our button class, but I'm going to put it lower, so I'm going to or uh, farther to the right. So I'm going to move it to 410, and then I'm going to change the text from a forward caret to a capital X, and then I'm going to do quit button dot draw. Of course, this is not that helpful um, until we can see the pause button being drawn. So what we should actually do is just come down uh, under our like event handling. Do 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 do. And let's just go below the whole if event dot type and make sure you're outside of for event in pygame dot event dot get. Um, and what we'll do is we'll say, okay, if pause but, which is just if the pause button is clicked in the outside world, right? We're going to set paused equal to true. We don't have to worry right now about how to turn true off because that's something that you can do or turn paused off, that's something you can do from inside the pause menu. So if I boot this up, <laughs> and we did all of that right, now the, the words should be going by, and I can click the pause button. Great, and it's paused. Um, nothing is displayed on the screen, but I clearly paused the game because the text is not going by anymore. So paused equals true is turning on. Um, if paused, we want to draw pause. And so we come up into draw pause and this should be going, oh, I know what's going on. We have a surface defined, but we haven't drawn this surface onto the screen. So um, yes, we're not gonna be able to test anything until we put the entire surface we've defined onto the screen. So screen.blit the surface at zero, zero. Just like anything else we blit onto the screen, we need to blit the surface onto the screen. Now we should be able to test it. Um, it was cool that it froze a word in place, that's a good thing. Um, but now I pause it and you can see, I can still see the word underneath it. And now I have this play button and I have this escape button. We haven't put the text on the screen yet, but our button class is working really well for those two. And now, Pressing the pause button doesn't do anything, and I can't type anymore and clear out my test string. So that's good. The pause functionality is working. Um, we just need to finish defining this pause menu. But now we have the ability to test it, which is great. <clears throat> okay, so uh, why don't we define these texts that we need? So let's define text for pause menu menu let's just start with uh some text that will tell you it's paused so we'll do surface dot blit uh header font dot render so we've already used the header font dot render and then in all caps i'm just going to say menu this doesn't need to be an f string it's just the word menu and then anti-alias will set to true we'll make it white because we're drawing it on like a black gray background so white looks good and then um, positionally 110 110 so it'll just be in the top right corner of our overall menu and now we just need to do a few more things we're going to tell them how to resume or play so we'll say play and we'll drop this next to our play button by moving it over to 210 175 uh, this was a little bit of me figuring out this style ahead of time so if you want to change around your pause menu just tweak these numbers as needed but for quit uh, i'm going to put that at 450 175 so it's kind of next to the play button but further right and then surface.blit we're going to have one more section below those two that will tell us the active letter lengths okay 
Um, and so that's just some text that we need to drop down below the buttons. So 110, 250, and now we need to define buttons for letter length selection. Okay, so let's boot that up and see how our text looks, okay, when we pause the game. Boot it up, pause, bang, okay? Menu, we have play, we have quit, we have active letter lengths, and now in this bottom section, let's drop in buttons for the active letter lengths, and then we'll figure out how to make each of those buttons do what we actually want. And while I'm thinking about it, just come back up to active string, active string, and make it an empty string to start. Uh, it kind of annoys me every time I boot that up. It still says test string. We don't need that. Okay, so define buttons for letter length selection. What we will say is for I in range length of our choices list, okay? Um, what I want to do is say the button is equal to my button class at uh, X position of 160 plus and then I times 80. This is just a nice way, remember it's radius 35, so diameter 70 pixels. I'm going to space them out every 80 pixels so there's some padding in between them. And the first one starting at 160 is just a good starting position. They'll all be in a horizontal row, so Y position will be 350 for all of them. The text is actually just going to read whatever I is plus two. So remember the first uh, choices um, index is two letter words. So I is zero for that. The text that I wanna put on the button is just two. So I plus two. And then uh, is clicked initially will be false. And then I'm gonna draw it on my paused surface. And then I will do button dot draw. Okay, so that is great. That is going to handle, um, gosh, what am I trying to say? That is going to handle displaying them. What do we do if they are clicked? If button dot clicked, um, not with parentheses, just a colon, we'll say if choice commits at I, so if that copy of the choices list at I is already true, then we'll say choice commits at I should become false. And then we will say else choice commits at I will become true. And why do this to a copy of the list and not just the base list? It's because um, you could hold down clicking on a button and it would just, it would oscillate on, off, on, off, on, off every scan. This way we're going to be able to change it just once per click. And we'll see how in just a second. If you don't believe me, try doing this directly to the choice list instead of choice commits copy. But then what we'll do is we'll also do a highlighted circle. So we'll do um, if choices at I is true, that means that this is selected. We'll do pygame.draw.circle and it's just gonna be a ring around, um, it's gonna be a ring around the button circle. So we'll say surface green and then the position for those was remember the X and Y position, 160 plus I times 80 and then the Y position of 350. And then I just want it to be radius 35 exactly like the button, but a ring, so five. And that's just gonna be green and showing us, um, green ring showing us what uh, choices are active. And then sort of like returning the pause button in the outside world, we're gonna return the resume button dot clicked, uh, we're <laughs> dot clicked, um, the choice commits list, and then the quit button dot clicked. Okay, so that is it for drawing the pause menu. I know there's a lot there, but we are returning the resume button, the quit button, and then all of the selections the player has made in the pause menu um, while it's active. So let's minimize this down. Let's take a look at how that looks visually, although it's gonna air out if we don't receive that stuff back in the outside world. So let's go ahead here. Remember, we just passed back the resume but <laughs> button, um, all of the changes to make to our choices list, and then the quit but as well. So those are the three things we get back from the draw pause menu. Let's just boot it up and take a look at how our pause menu looks. Okay, it looks really good. And if I click these, nothing happens yet because we haven't told it what to do for any of these buttons, but it looks great. We have our buttons, they're behaving the way they're supposed to. 
Um, and the three is the only one active because that's the only one you can currently do. Now let's use these buttons, okay? Let's come down into the um, uh, if event dot type area and we'll do another one underneath um, if event dot type is pygame dot key down. We'll add one and we'll say if event dot type is equal to pygame dot mouse button up and the game is paused. Okay, so we only need to check this if the game is paused. But what we'll do is we'll say if event dot button is equal to one, then we want to set choices equal to our changes. Okay, so this is just our way of checking and seeing if the uh, button has been unclicked and that's when we want to change um, all of the choices based on what was selected in the pause menu. All right, hopefully that makes sense. I know we're pretty deep into this tutorial and I haven't slept through the night in like four weeks. So <laughs> let's see if this works now. If I can click four and five and remove three and then hit play, um, I probably am gonna, oh right, we haven't done anything with the play button yet. <laughs> Okay, but you can see the highlighting is changing. So presumably, once we get play and quit working, um, this will let us change what our um, this will let us change what uh, things are actively in use. And one thing I'm noticing I did in the version that's on GitHub, so we should do it here, is I added one more key in here to the if event.type equals pygame.key down. I added that you can change pause status with the escape key. So if event.key is equal to pygame.k underscore escape, um, what I did was I just said if it's paused, then paused equals false, and then else paused equals false true so you can click the button in the bottom right or you can hit the escape key to enter the pause menu you can then hit the escape key to exit the pause menu all right now i think the only other things we have to do are figure out what to do with the quit button and what to do with the resume button um and then i think we can do sound effects and high score which are really the last pieces um, okay, so let's come down under the if paused and getting resume button changes and quit button. And let's just say if we've pressed the resume button, then paused equals false. That's all resume is going to do is just put us back into the game. But if the quit button, if the quit button was pressed, that means we want to exit. So run equals false. But we need to add checking for high score before exiting program and I'm just putting this here as a note for myself so I don't forget to do that and we also want to do that when the uh, X button is pressed down here okay because the way high score checking is going to work we're only going to check and write to the text file at the end of a run so when you've lost all of your lives um, or if you're trying to quit out of the program so we'll do that in a function uh, and we'll do that really soon um, but we need to make sure that we remember to do it every place that you could exit the program or um, when you lose all of your lives. Okay, so that should be the resume button working. Um, one thing that I do think we should do is actually when the game starts up, we should have pause be equal to true rather than false so that you have the ability from the very beginning to select what length words you want to do. So let's run it. And let's say I want to play an eight letter version of the game. Let's hit play. And you can see the very first word I get is an eight letter word that I've never heard of. <laughs> Unthrall, pretty cool. And then staccato, pretty cool. I'm clearly pretty good at typing. Don't get intimidated by my typing skills. Sympodia. And you can see like I'm getting a lot of scoring uh, for these uh, just three levels. So now let's pause it and let's try to turn on uh, two and three, but turn off eight. Because level four is already active, this won't take effect until level five because that's the next level we have to do. So hopefully I can survive. Revenuer, Chirupi. I think I lost Chirupi. 
Yep, and now I have two letter words, and what you'll see is that score moves way slower. So um, that's kind of the trade-off, right? Two and three letter words, way easier to type, way easier to survive and get to high levels. But if our scoring is based on essentially how good of a typer we are, the longer the words, the more the challenge, um, the better the score. So that's just a fun little twist on this game. The Like I said, the last two big things, because this quit menu is working really well, this play uh, is working, changing the layers is working, entering is working. Um, first thing, I don't need to print this anymore. I don't know. I just like to clean things up when I'm done printing them. Uh, so what we want to do is high score, which is pretty easy to do. Um, and then we'll do sound effects. So let's go ahead and do high score uh, read in from text file. Okay, so what we're gonna do is make a text file in our same folder as our project and just call it high underscore text dot txt. Um, and so uh, make sure you have an empty or a high score dot txt text file in your project folder. Um, initially, I'm gonna put a zero in there because we haven't played the game before. So just a high score dot txt folder file, not folder, file in your folder where it just has a zero in it to start. And let's go ahead and say that our file is going to be equal to open and then uh, high score dot txt. And then uh, we want to read it when the program boots up. So we're up here in this initialization section and we're getting the previous high score when the game boots up. So we will say read equals file dot read lines. Um, and then I know that the only thing I put in that file is the high score. Uh, if you want to put a whole bunch of more information in here, you need a slightly more advanced um, read code. But I know that if I just grab read uh, item zero integer conversion of it, I will get the high score. And then I can do file.close. That is all I have to do to get the initial high score. Um, and then rather than have this high score equals one up here, I just get rid of that because high score equals to whatever I just read in from the file, which is cool, but we need to be able to update the high score if we get a new high score, right? So we need to make this function, which we'll call check high score. Okay, let's come down to our methods and let's do a define check high score. And this is what I referenced we need to do every time the, uh, every time the game could exit, okay? Um, and it's a small little function, so I'm going to call global high score, even though it's bad practice to use a bunch of globals. And I'll just say if whatever the score is when we need to call this function is greater than the previous high score, we'll set high score equal to the current score. And then we will use uh, sort of that same file equals open stuff, but we're going to do write instead of read. So not sure why my screen is all gooped but we're gonna open highscore.txt again, but this time with a W, and then we'll do file.write, uh, and then you have to write strings to text files, so we'll do string of an integer conversion of our high score. So this is just me making sure it goes into the file as an integer, so that when I read it back out, I can convert it to an integer without worrying about a type mismatch. And then do file.close, and this is it for check high score. The only thing now is to make sure that we call check high score in all of the right places. So we'll come down to quit button. And before we quit, we'll check the high score. Um, and then let's go down to the X button in our game handling. And we'll say before uh, setting run equal to false there, we will also check the high score. And now there's going to be one more place that we should check the high score. And this is something we haven't covered yet. But this is what we do when we run out of lives, but we want to keep playing. So we'll say if lives ever goes negative, um, what we should do is set paused back equal to true because it's not just paused. It's also our in between runs uh, screen. So that'll be the screen we want to have pop up when we lose too, so that we can change our letter selections if we want and start the game back up. So then we'll reinitialize level to one, we'll reinitialize lives to five, we'll clear out the word objects list, um, we'll basically uh, new level equals true, we'll basically reset everything when we run out of lives. Um, and then before changing the high score, we wanna check the high score. But then after we're done checking the high score, we'll clear out the score to zero. 
So this is basically our restart code we just did in 10 quick and dirty little rows of uh, code down at the bottom of our screen. Um, but that's awesome. I mean, I think if we boot this up now, uh, hopefully we get high score of zero. Okay, I'm just going to play on two letter words and let's see wa is 40, en is 80, um, ox is 120, nice. And LA is 146, TD, ZO. These are neat words. I'm going to try to get one more level and then let myself lose, or two more levels, I guess, and then let myself lose. And let's make sure the high scoring is working. So O F W E A L U G O X. And what you can see if you compare this to the eight letter words um, from the previous level is that my score is going nowhere quickly because two letter words are so easy to type in. Okay, so hopefully I'll automatically get kicked to the pause menu now. It'll go back to level one. Yep, level one, lives five, score is back to zero, but now best has updated with 502. If I hit quit and I go to the high score.txt file, you'll see that 502 is in there. So this is a great bit of high score tracking code we did really quickly. So well done. Pretty sure the last thing I want to put in here with you guys is sound effects. And again, if you're good, um, feel free to dip out. But I thought sound effects really made the game a lot more fun. Um, and they're really easy to implement. So let's take a look at how to do that really quickly. We'll just come under the fonts and we'll do sound effects and music section okay and so uh, let's just start by um, initializing the mixer so this is pygame.mixer.init this is like the audio mixer that comes with pygame and we'll do pygame.mixer.music.load and i have a uh, music file in my assets folder so it's assets forward slash sounds forward slash music dot mp3 i got it from the royalty free youtube uh library so you don't have to worry about copyright on that asset um pygame.mixer.music.set volume so the next thing we're going to do is set the volume so that it's not crazy loud to 0.2 and then pygame.mixer this is background music so dot music dot play it can play the entire time this is booted up and if you want it to loop infinitely just put a minus one in there because this is a loops argument so if you want to play twice put a two in there if you want to play eight times put an eight in there uh, i don't know how long you'll be playing the game how good you are at it so i want to loop forever so i put a minus one now let's get the three uh sound effects i have which are click uh whoosh and then wrong. So basically click is every time you enter a character, it sounds like a, a keyboard tapping or a pen clicking. Then I have a whoosh, which is good. That means you got one right and it got removed from the words list. And then I have wrong, which is like playing a sour note on a guitar or something. So those are the three sound effects. Uh, the code is the same for all of them. So we'll go pretty quick here. It's pygame.mixer.sound with a capital S. And then you have to point it just like a font to where it is. So assets forward slash sounds again all in the github forward slash click dot mp3 and then let's just copy this pygame.mixer.sound uh to here and here and this one i called uh swoosh but it's got a capital s um, and then this one is instrument strum with capital i and s but that is all we have to do there but we're going to copy all three of these because one more thing i want to do is click dot set volume and for the clicking noise of uh, 0.3 was pretty good for a whooshing noise i think 0.2 was pretty good and some of this was just guess and check so feel free to play around with it in your build and what feels good for you but that's our click our whoosh and our wrong and if you remember we already kind of said where most of these should go so the you did something right I believe if we go into check answer, play successful sound effect here, the one for check answer when something was done correctly is whoosh, and we just do whoosh.play. It doesn't need any loops or anything like that. Um, now, the one when you enter something wrong is the one that we did in uh, check score, or uh, in the main game loop, but in that score section, 
right here, play wrong entry sound if in it is equal to score. Cause this means you submitted something that is not on uh, the screen. So for this, it's just wrong dot play. And then the last sound effect I have is when a key is entered and added to the string. So that would be here and we'll just say click dot play. And I guess we'll play it if you delete uh, characters too. All right. So that's all we had to do is we have, we should have infinite background music playing now. It should automatically load in our high score when we boot this up and it should have sound effects uh, when we click new entries, when we take words out and when we get stuff wrong. So let's test it, run the typing racer. Background music starts playing, sounds cool. Let's do five and six letter words. Let's play it. And let's see what our first word is. Cleval. And hopefully you can hear through the uh, YouTube recording, our sound effect there when we type. Sounds cool, sounds like uh, pen clicking or keys clicking. And then if we get something wrong, we get that like uh, dink, but then we get this cool like whoosh when we get it right. Okay, so I think that is awesome. I think it's really cool. I think we put a ton of functionality in here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed building this game. If you took this project and you added a bunch, bunch of functionality to it, or you think it's cool and you think it needs extra stuff tacked onto the end, drop a comment letting me know what you added um, because I love seeing people take my projects and then do extra stuff with it. It's so cool. That's why I do this channel. Um, if you watched to the very end, if you built this whole project with me, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't hit the like button or subscribe to the channel yet, please consider doing that. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. And until next time, bye.